chapter 26, we continue Paul's trial, if you will. Agrippa is now helping out Festus, and Agrippa says to Paul, you have permission to speak for yourself. So Paul motioned with his hand and began his defense. King Agrippa, I consider myself fortunate to stand before you today as I make my defense against all the accusations of the Jews, and especially so because you are well acquainted with all the Jewish customs and controversies. Therefore, I beg you to listen to me patiently. He says, I know you understand the Jewish culture, so I'm asking that you listen to me with patience so that I can thoroughly explain my defense, sir. Verse 4. The Jewish people all know the way I've lived ever since I was a child, from the beginning of my life in my own country and also in Jerusalem. They have known me for a long time and can testify, if they are willing, that I conform to the strictest sect of our religion, living as a Pharisee. He said, I once was a Pharisee. And now it is because of my hope in what God has promised our ancestors that I am on trial today. This is the promise our 12 tribes are hoping to see fulfilled as they earnestly serve God day and night. King Agrippa, it is because of this hope that these Jews are accusing me. Why should any of you consider it incredible that God raises the dead? Why would you think that the God that created everything couldn't give life back to what has died? God, who is the giver of life, can restore life just as easily, Paul says, verse nine. I too was convinced that I ought to do all that was possible to oppose the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And that is just what I did in Jerusalem. On the authority of the chief priests, I put many of the Lord's people in prison. And when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. Many a time I went from one synagogue to another to have them punished. And I tried to force them to blaspheme. I was so obsessed with persecuting them that I even hunted them down in foreign cities. He said, I was a persecutor of the church. He said, I used to be like the ones that are accusing me today. Verse 12, on one of these journeys, I was going to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priests. About noon, King Agrippa, I was on the road and I saw a light from heaven brighter than the sun blazing around me and my companions. We fell to the ground and I heard a voice saying to me in Hebrew, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? It is hard for you to kick against the goads. Then I asked, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus who you are persecuting. Now get up, stand on your feet. I've appeared to you to appoint you as a servant, as a witness of what you've seen and will see of me. I will rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles. I am sending you to them to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God so that they may receive forgiveness of sins in a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. He said, Jesus told me that my ministry is to the Gentiles. Jesus is sending me to share the revelation of Jesus Christ so that they can have eternal life as well, not just for the Jews, but for the Gentiles also. Verse 19, So then King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the vision from heaven, first to those in Damascus, then to Jerusalem, all of Judea, then to the Gentiles. I preached that they should repent and turn to God and demonstrate their repentance by their deeds. That is why some Jews seized me in the temple courts and tried to kill me. But God has helped me to this very day so that I stand here and testify to small and great alike. I am saying nothing beyond what the prophets and Moses said would happen, that the Messiah would suffer and as the first to rise from the dead would bring the message of light to his own people and to the Gentiles. At this point, Festus interrupted Paul's defense. He said, you're out of your mind, Paul. Your great learning is driving you insane. Paul would reply, I'm not insane, most excellent Festus. What I am saying is true and reasonable. The king is familiar with these things and I can speak freely to him. I am convinced that none of this has escaped his notice because it was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe in the prophets? I know you do. Then Agrippa said to Paul, do you think that in such a short time you can persuade me to be a Christian? Paul replied, short time or long, I pray to God that not only you, but all who are listening to me today may become what I am, except for these chains. The king rose and with him the governor and Bernice and those sitting with them. After they left the room, they began saying to one another, this man is not doing anything that deserves death or imprisonment. Agrippa said to Festus, this man could have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar. But because he had appealed to Caesar, he would be sent to Rome to be heard by Caesar. And we realize and we learn that Festus and Agrippa, while they might not have agreed with Paul's faith, they realized that the Jewish people were persecuting him and were trying to kill him out of their anger and out of their spite. But because of Paul's choice to appeal to Rome, to appeal to Caesar, because he had such a desire to go to Rome and share the gospel, he would soon be sent to Rome, which we will learn about in chapter 27. Be blessed today.